Thanks for joining us. We're looking at this great subject, uh, what it means to be a Christ-centered people, followers of Jesus, uh, the fruit of what it means to make much of Jesus. And so we're looking at this. Uh, many people, as we say, claim to be followers of Jesus, love Christ, are all about Jesus, but there's got to be fruit. And so we're just highlighting some of the fruit, the proof that Christ is exalted, that we are a Christ-centered people. And so one of the things I am convinced of too, as being a Christ-centered people or a follower of Jesus, is that we are a courageous people, a courageous church. Courage is a little bit different to confidence, and I spoke about confidence already. But what does it mean to be a courageous church? I love in uh, the book of Acts, Acts chapter 4, in verse 13, it says this. It says, When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note of that these men had been with Jesus. There was something about their courage, unschooled and ordinary. That's me. Um, that's like most of us. But what was amazing for them was they saw the courage of these guys and they recognized the courage had come because these guys had been with Jesus. And so in my opinion, I'm convinced that we as God's people, if we were truly Christ-centered, we would be courageous people. I'm nervous to say that I'm that right now, but it's an observation and I believe a revelation that the church, modern day uh, discipleship is all about surviving our culture rather than about transforming our culture. Our parenting has gone into how do we survive this culture? How do we get our children to survive? And I have three sons and they're teenagers and I carry the same challenges. But, but I've got to tell you, friends, when it comes to parenting and leading and discipling God's people, I can't find in Scripture any backing that we call to survive. And so I'm highlighting that because the Holy Spirit was given to empower us not to survive, but actually to transform the culture. Therefore, we need this revelation of fresh courage that needs to come. And it's not a feeling, and it's not that I feel courageous today. It's the understanding of where the power of the Holy Spirit is. Much of the church today has gone into survival mode. We've almost backed off and become silent and quiet and kind of in our holy huddle, as it were, waiting for something of the return of Christ. And while we too long for the return of Christ, let me say it like this. Jesus never saved us just to take us to heaven. If he did, then all of us who were saved should have been taken straight away and Forgive me for being honest. I wish he had done that with some of us because some of us are so misrepresenting Jesus. But we have been saved out. John 17, Jesus' prayer, a great prayer. And, and, and you can learn a lot from what he prays. But, but he says that, Father, make us one and make them one. And then he says, I'm we haven't been called out of this world. We're no longer in it, but we're still of it. And I think some of the church today has taken this truth as we are so separate, called out which is what the church is called out, that we're so separate from the world that we have no impact in the world. And I'm convinced that in this season, we as God's people are not to be of the world, but we better get back into the world and begin to thrive and begin to touch people's lives and begin to show them with fresh courage. It's a, it's a season of being courageous again. I look at the, the Bible as an example again, and there's many illustrations of this. But what about the exiles who were exiled into Babylon? Jeremiah 29, a very well-known text for many, where it says, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. We all quote that, plans to prosper you and not to harm you and to give you hope and a future. And that's a great text and it's a great promise. But the context is actually around a city and it's actually around the exiles who were exiled into Babylon. And in verse 6, it says, Jeremiah 29, verse 6, it says, God says this, build houses, settle down. Uh, marry and have children, increase, do not decrease. And then it says, pray for the peace and prosperity of the city to which I've called you. Because if the city prospers, you too will prosper. So it's not this hang in there, I'm coming to rescue you. It's more like thrive, don't survive, impact, have an impact there, make a difference, uh, show, culture. And so the point in all of this for us guys is if we are truly following Christ, if Christ is if we are Christ-exalted people, Christ-centered people, we would walk with courage in this season, not speaking in our own, but speaking of the, the truth. And the more you spend time with Christ, the more courageous you are. The more you walk with Him, the more you can carry courage because it's not ours. It's not something we've come up with. It comes from spending time with Him. We need to step out. We need to reach out. We need to stop kind of leaving a building and concrete building as to that's the mission. We need to be go beyond our buildings and get amongst the people. We need to 
counter the culture, not try and buy into the culture or even become like the culture, but let's impact the culture by being counterculture, not against the culture, but reaching them with the kingdom culture. I love this whole social media and I love the whole social gospel and I, I believe we've got to live out this gospel, but I love how Vance Hefner said, if the social gospel was there uh, when the prodigal son was around, he would have got a sandwich and he would have got a bed and he would never have returned to the father. And so I do think we, we, we can feed people and clothe them and love them without giving them the gospel. We need to give them this gospel. We need to counter this culture. We need to reach out. But it's going to take a people who are courageous enough to know that what we're being called to is what Christ has for us but it comes from spending time with Jesus. So the fruit of being Christ-centered is to be a courageous people.